this is my stuff that's going up on SD. Obviously not the props, so just the baskets and the hammocks. The rest are for actually for my ferrets for Easter. Hey you guys, and welcome back to my channel. Easter is coming in the next couple of weeks, and I thought it would be a really great idea to do a tutorial for your pets, some things that you can make for your pets for Easter. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be making an Easter basket that hangs from your cage. It's gonna be similar to the tutorial that I did that was the square basket. This one's gonna be round, and I pulled all of my spring, um, like my spring colors that I have left over. Um, and then I went to the store, and um, I got some Easter uh, fabrics. So these are just cotton fabrics. They're quilting cotton. I did pre-wash these. Um, I don't always pre-wash my fabric. It really just depends on the type of material it is. For cotton like this, um, I do pre-wash because it will shrink. So if you sew everything together and you don't pre-wash cotton, um, particularly quilters cotton, uh, what typically tends to happen is when you, after you wash it, it kind of bunches up real tight because it um, shrinks after you wash it. It's 100% cotton. So I pre-wash that stuff with no, with soap that has no fragrances, that um, has no kind of chemicals or any of that, and I do not use any dryer sheets. I'm going to be selling some of this stuff, so I don't want to launder someone else's stuff and anything that has scent. I also don't use any kind of scent for anything that I'm using with my animals. Um, it's just too risky with their skin specifically with the ferrets they are super sensitive so without further ado let's just let's just make a video okay so for this project you're gonna need a pair of scissors um, you're gonna want some clips or pins whichever you prefer you're gonna need some kind of strapping if you don't want to use strapping if you're if your animal eats this or you just don't have this you can use pieces of fleece um, you're gonna want something to write with you're gonna need a ruler you want to be able to create a circle, whether that is with your hand or with, I'm using a cake topper plastic container. This is about 11 inches across. So that's what I'm going to use. You could also use a pencil on a string. There's a technique for that. Um, you're going to want to get some fusible fleece. That's what I'm using. You can buy this at Joann's, Mike, uh, Michael's probably, any of the craft stores. You can get it at Joann's by the yard. Um, you can also sometimes get this at Walmart. This is really great for helping your basket keep its shape. You can also, if you don't have fusible fleece, you can use cotton batting. You can use, this is organic cotton batting. That's why it's a yellowish color. Um, and then they have the whitish cotton batting. Either one of those would work. You're going to want to have um, some sort, I'm going to use cotton fabric, you can use flannel, you can actually also use fleece. It really just depends on what you want. For decorative purposes, I'm using cotton, um, quilter's cotton, that's what I'm going to use for this. And then you're going to want fleece, and I'm going to be using my scraps. Now, you do want your fleece to be at least 36 or 37 inches long at the minimum. This is actually... I'm showing blue on the camera, but it's actually purple. And I'm using this dark color because these are dark. But um, that's what you're going to need. And your sewing machine. So, And then if you are using fusible fleece, you're also going to need to have an iron. Um, that's going to be essential for the fusible fleece in order to fuse it. Alright, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to take my cake topper, or my circle, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna just literally trace this and cut it out. Okay, so now what you should have is you should have two round pieces and you should have two side pieces. And now what you need to do is you need to cut a piece of fusible fleece for each of these. So you're going to need um, two round pieces of fusible fleece and two rectangle pieces of fusible fleece. So here's what you want. You want your iron. You want, I have mine set to a very light steam. Um, I don't know that you're supposed to use steam. I do. It makes it work better. That's my theory. 
Your fusible fleece has a rough side. The rough side is the gluey side or the part that will fuse. That's the part that needs to be facing the back of your fleece and your cotton. So you wanna take the back side of your fleece and put it against the back side or the rough side of the fusible fleece. So lay that over top. You um, don't want, you want it to kind of look like this. So there should be a little bit of space that's not covered by fusible fleece. Um, just because it's easier to sew and also it stops glue from getting on your iron. Um, I would turn it like this. Make sure that you cover up your fleece. Fleece will burn with an iron, I promise. So do yourself a favor and protect your fleece. Um, I do this. This is a really thick towel. I spritz over top of this, not soak it, just spritz it. And then you hold down and you lift up and you hold down and you do about very short intervals, specifically when you're using fleece. If you're doing this with cotton, you don't have to worry as much. And then check it. And if it fused, it won't be. See, this is still loose. You don't want that. Um, so I'm gonna just... And that's probably good, to be honest. And there, that, that's good enough. That's what you want. And that, then just set this aside. Now you're gonna do the same thing to your cotton piece. Okay, so now you should have your uh, fusible fleece on both sides of both of your fabrics. So pick one, doesn't matter which one, we're gonna do the same thing to both. So this is what we're gonna do. Now this is gonna seem a little unnatural for your fabric. It's gonna probably fight you. Some people do this as they sew. I personally would rather have it pinned together as when I go to the machine because it makes it easier for me to manage it. But it's up to you if you're really good at sewing and you feel comfortable winging it, knock yourself out. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna take the right side of your rectangle piece and you wanna place it against the right side of your circle and you want to line up the edges. So you're going to line up this bottom edge to the bottom edge of your circle. Now, like I said, this is a little unnatural um, for your fabric, but that's just the way that it is. So basically your fabric's gonna look like this. And what we wanna do is we wanna line this up all the way around. So basically you should have, now this is bigger than it needs to be. I'm gonna cut it off later. Um, actually I can cut some of it off now. What you're gonna end up doing is sewing these together, but for now we're just gonna cut off a piece of this. All right. So basically you should have something that looks like this. And it should be pinned all the way around the edges. Now you're gonna do the same thing to your cotton piece. All right, so right now you should have some two that look like this. And they should be pinned on the edges. And the same thing for your cotton piece. So now we're gonna go to our machine. We're gonna start on one side. We're gonna sew a quarter inch or a half inch seam, whatever, whichever one you want. Just make sure you catch both layers of fabric all the way around. You, when you get to about here, you're gonna wanna meet these together. You may have to cut off a piece of this. Basically, you want to stitch these together you could actually do it beforehand it's up to you um i mean i typically sew it and then i stitch up this line here but i'll stop the video and show you so i'm going to start i'm going to go from here all the way around and i'm going to end right about here right before this so about a quarter inch before this so that i can attach them and then i'll complete the stitch around so because of the thickness of the fabric i recommend that you increase your stitch length to at least five um that may be best Okay, so I stopped. I didn't finish sewing it all the way around to show you guys. So basically you have this spot left right here. 
Um, and so what we want to do is you want these to line up perfectly. So you want to cut it so that it's not overlapping. You basically want it to line up perfectly like this. So it looks like it lines up right about here. So I can see that basically this whole inch right here is, is extra. So I'm going to cut that off. Now I'm going to take this. So now what I would do is I would stitch down here and then finish sewing up this hole right here. Do the same thing with this one. Okay, so now that you've sewn these, you should have something that looks like this. Um, same thing with this one right here. You want to make sure that you caught all the fabric, that there is no open edges where you stitched, um, that you have no, nothing is open, that it's all nice and sewn tightly. You can leave your outside piece just the way it is. You want to take your center piece and you want to flip it right side out. So now it should look like this. Okay, so get your two seams here and here. Take your inner piece and stick it inside of your outer piece. Make sure you line up your seams so it should be right sides facing together. And um, you want to line your seams up. So what you have to do now is you want to line up the edges and just pin them in place. Okay, so what you should have now should look like this. So, I'm going to put hook um, straps in here, and we're going to hang. I'm going to use this one as a hanging one. But um, I made this one, and this one, if you notice, has the dip. This is going to be more like a cuddle cup. So I'm not going to put straps in this, and this will just sit in the cage, um, and it'll be like a cuddle cup. So they could just walk right in. You can use it kind of as a bed. Um, I am going to probably put the dip in this one, too. And then I'll put a dip in this one as well. And I'm going to hang, I think I'm going to hang this one too. So I made three. I'm going to put these on my SD shop. So let's, I'm going to show you how to cut the dip. So here's how we do that. You can, um, so you can do it a couple ways. You can measure it out or you can kind of wing it. I just free cut this, but it's kind of whatever you want. I would cut it across from your seam. Okay, so to cut the dip in the front, we're just literally going to cut a dip. It looks just like that. And then what we're going to do is we, um, you have to pin this back together because we need to stitch this. So it should look like this. Okay, so I changed some stuff around. So I'm going to actually make this one a cuddle cup. This one I'm going to hang. And what I did was I cut three 11 inch strips of um, strapping. So this, if you fold this in half, it'll make this hang about five and a half inches down from the top of the cage. So when you put these in, I'm going to put one directly in the back where the seam is. Now, if you have a sewing machine that doesn't do good with thick you may not want to put it where the seam is it's already going to be thick there anyway so um, you want to make sure you put your straps inside in between the two layers of fabric so you want the hoop facing in um, and you want to make sure because you're only using three straps that you balance this so you want to think about how this is going to balance when you um, how you're balancing it once it's hanging so I'm going to put this on the very back edge, right between the, but now, like I said, if you, if your sewing machine isn't great with thick fabrics, you may not want to do that. You may want to put it on the edge a little bit different. All right. So now what you're going to do is for either one, you're going to stitch all the way around, but you're going to leave an opening. I recommend that you leave your opening on this back side somewhere. Um, the way that I do this is I take two pins that are colored and I mark a spot. So I'm going to say I'm going to leave it open here, from here to here. So I am going to stitch. I'm going to start, let's say I start here. I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to stop on this 
other pin here. So I'm going to start over here. I'm going to end over here. All right. So now you've sewn all the way around. And now what you want to do is you want to find your hole that you left and you want to flip this inside out. So, so now <laughs> you need to um, take your fleece and you need to tuck it in and you could just kind of play with it until it makes its shape. So what you want to do now that you have your shape, get your clips and you want to kind of clip this, you want to clip it like so that this part is lined up like this. Okay, so when you get to your open part right here, you need to roll this in so that it matches the rest of your seams. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch all the way around and if you your sewing machine is too um not good with thick fabrics you're going to want to hand stitch your opening clothes and then not top stitch around this is my finished product Okay, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I will be putting all of this stuff up on my SD shop um, for sale, which probably won't matter to anyone who is watching this video because most of you probably sew. But um, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so that you don't miss any new uploads. I have lots of stuff planned coming. I'm also going to be doing some more Easter tutorials. That is my plan. Hopefully, I will get them done in the next week or two.